Welcome back guys. It's time to talk about one of my favorite asset classes, cryptocurrency. What exactly is cryptocurrency? How does it work? And is crypto a good investment opportunity? Welcome back everyone. Nathan here and we're going to be looking at the past, the present and the future of cryptocurrency. The past you will learn a quick history of currency starting thousands of years ago with the barter system leading all the way up to its modern digital form. The present, you will learn how currency has evolved into cryptocurrency. So we'll look at what is cryptocurrency and how it works. And the future. As this is a channel about money and investing, we'll take a look at the future of cryptocurrency. Is it a good investment opportunity? By the end of this video, you will know more than 95% of the population about cryptocurrency. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. It's probably around about here or here or here. Okay, sit back, relax. This is the past, the present and the future of one of my favorite asset classes, cryptocurrency. A brief history of currency. Here's a nice family, and they're in the market for a new bow. But remember, there is no money, so they can't buy one. So what do they do? Well, it all starts with some kind of medium of exchange. So they go down to the marketplace, and they meet someone with a bow. This dates back over 100,000 years ago, and it's the old bartering system. So they need something to exchange. Um, in this case, they have a couple of axes, so they make the exchange and everything's good. The problem arises is that this doesn't always work out. So this time, they now need a cow, and all they have to exchange are a couple of chickens. But she doesn't want chickens, and this is where the bartering system falls down. Now, over the centuries, humans have tried many different things. For hundreds of years, in China and across India, they actually used shells as a currency. People have tried using commodities like salt before, and even chocolate. In the South Americas, chocolate, the raw cacao bean, was actually also used as a currency. So over the years, humans have got better and better with practice, trying out all the different things, and they realize that currency isn't just a medium of exchange, it also needs to be a unit of account. The currency has to be portable, it has to be divisible, and it also has to be fungible, which is basically an identical copy of each unit. Dating back to the 7th century, this is where gold and silver started to be used. And gold and silver coins was used for hundreds of years, about 400 years, up to about the 11th century, when governments figured out, actually, we don't even need to make gold and silver coins, we can just use paper. If we just scribble some ink in a certain way, we can use paper as a currency. Then it wasn't until up to the 20th century that we first saw digital currency with the rise of the internet. So as you can see, the evolution of currency We've tried a lot of things over the past. The birth of cryptocurrency. 
So it all changed in 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto proposed Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, and Bitcoin changed everything. It was the first to utilize cryptography and the blockchain network, and it was decentralized. What are the main benefits of cryptocurrency? Well, as it's a decentralized network, it's really hard to hack. So it's ultra secure, it's ultra transparent, and it's ultra fast. What exactly is cryptocurrency? It's a digital cash that uses cryptography to create and verify transfers of currency. So let's break down cryptography. It's all to do with encryption. Let me give you an example. Say we have some data to send someone. Now this could be any kind of data and we're gonna need a receiver. So the person we're actually sending it to. In this case, we're gonna use some cryptocurrency. So we're gonna send $100 worth of crypto. Now the problem we have is that there are middlemen, hackers out there waiting to intercept this and potentially steal the money. So what do we do? Well, this is where we'll be encrypting the data as we send it using private and public keys. Now this way, if anyone intercepts it, the data is kind of useless. And the only way to decrypt the, the data is with a key. So how many cryptos are there out there? So this website is called CoinMarketCap and it shows all the different cryptocurrency projects out there. So we can see there's actually over 5,700 different cryptocurrencies in some form or another. And you'll see obviously Bitcoin is number one, Ethereum being number two. We now have the first stable coin, Tether being number three. And this website will show you the actual cryptocurrency, its current market value, its current price, how much volume is being traded day to day, and the circulating supply. And as you can see, feel free to scroll down, but there's many different cryptocurrencies. So the question is, which ones are gonna be the new future and which ones are gonna disappear out of existence? So here's my prediction of the future. The cryptocurrency will not be decentralized. We can already see the Venezuela government launched the petrodollar. So the petrodollar was launched in February 2018 and it's a cryptocurrency issued by the government of Venezuela. Or what about Libra? the digital currency that Facebook is trying to launch. It's a permission-based blockchain digital currency proposed by American social media company, Facebook. Again, centralized. Or what about this? Japanese banks are thinking of making their own cryptocurrency called the JCoin, centralized. Or this. China PBOC says its own cryptocurrency is close to release. Again, centralized. Is the crypto bubble over? If we remember in January 2018, the crypto market had had this huge run up by the general public. It crossed over $750 billion as a market cap only to come crashing back down for the next couple of years. So the question is, is the cryptocurrency bubble over? Well, this is the cycle of a bubble because bubbles have happened in history with people again and again and again. It's a cycle that repeats and repeats. This is the typical cycle of a bubble. It starts off with the smart money, in the stealth phase, we then get to the awareness phase where the institutional investors get involved. 
It's the mania phase where the general public gets involved and we have this huge buy up into a new paradigm where everyone thinks this is how I'm going to get rich only to have an enormous crash right into despair before we return to the mean. This has also happened many times in history. It happened in the 1600s with tulips, the actual flower. So not only were tulips becoming a currency, they also were becoming more and more valuable and people were buying and speculating on them. And then into the 1600s, they had this huge massive bubble only to crash back down. But the important point here is that tulips never recovered. Here is another example of a popular bubble. This time it was in tech stocks and it was in the year 2000, also known as the dot-com bubble. So for the previous 10 years, tech stocks had been growing, growing, growing. Everyone was buying these dot-com domain names, thinking that this is it, this is how I'm gonna get uh, rich. It rushed up to a huge bubble in the year 2000, only to crash back down over the next three years. However, this time something a little bit different happened. We're now gonna zoom out a bit, and the bit that I just showed you was this bubble here in the year, two, in the year 2000, where it crashed back down. However, because these were internet stocks, not all of them were actually bad. And unlike tulips, it did take quite a lot of years where there was a little bit of growth, a little bit of, um, that was the 2008 crash. But then look what happened to internet stocks. All the way up to 2018, we've had this huge run and internet stocks have set all time highs. And I think this is also gonna happen with cryptocurrency. So we can see now we've zoomed out a bit. This was the big bubble uh, that shot up in January 2018. It's come down for a couple of years. However, it's now finding new ground. And the thing is with cryptocurrencies, again, some of them are gonna be really valuable. So instead of tulips where it never comes back, I predict that there's gonna be some really useful cryptocurrencies and we're gonna see another cycle so now you know what currency is, how it's evolved over time, you know what crypto is, how cryptography works. The question now is, is cryptocurrency a good investment opportunity? And I think, yes it is. Just remember though, it is high risk, which is how it can give you high returns. So only invest a small percentage of your portfolio. I will be doing a whole separate video on how to buy cryptocurrency that's coming soon. Um, that's going to go over all the different places that you can buy it from, the different wallets that you can buy to make sure that you keep it safe. However, if you're looking for a place today that is safe and secure, the company that I always recommend is called Coinbase. It's one of the largest exchanges out there and it has over 35 million customers. There is a link below in the description where if you sign up to Coinbase through that link, you can get $10 of free Bitcoin when you invest over $100 with Coinbase. Okay, so if you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. I've got some great videos coming up, so if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. And tell me, what do you think about cryptocurrency? Have you invested in it before? What do you think the future is? If you've got any comments, post them below this video. Okay, so next week is all about stocks. So we're gonna be going over what a stock market is, all the different kinds of stocks. So be sure to look out for those videos next week. But for now, this is all, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, cheers guys.